All right, so here we are. We're actually playing. It's, it's amazing. We've done almost nothing, but we've played. I've spent a lot of time trying to work through the rules and, uh, you know, kind of migrating from basic to advanced because, you know, I couldn't just play the basic game straight up. I had to want to play advanced. So, uh, a couple of things. The tables, the rules and the tables, there's, you know, some references to tables and you got to kind of find those and some of them are non-obvious where they are and others are obvious but then uh, riddled, riddled with the... Uh, uh, notes underneath. In fact, you know, one of the combat charts has A through N. So what's that? 13 or something like that. Uh, notes, which are all at least 20 or 10 or 12, 15 words uh, with exceptions uh, in each of them. So it takes a little bit of thinking to get through what a combat actually is and how combat works and some of the movement stuff. You know, I, I spent 20 minutes online trying to work out how to remove friggin' air, aircraft because I didn't see the movement types chart, which is on the table right here. There's the tack air table. Look, it's got a movement terrain effects, but then down here on the bottom left hand side is the movement ranges for everybody. Well, you know, I understand we when this game was made, <coughs> would have been nice to uh, put that on the counter somewhere. I saw something interesting about this artwork too. This artwork is in... When I say artwork, I use the term art. Uh, these icons <laughs> are uh, almost direct lifts from the the strategy... Uh, is it strategy, arms and tactics of the Soviet army or something like that from David Isby? These icons are almost exactly the same. The only difference being that some of them are coloured. And then, of course, we've got these, you know, big, thick boxes around things to, to help define other bits and pieces. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about combat and how combat works. And I've actually kind of, kind of, sort of worked it out. So, you know, one side is allocated its initiative and then it gets to move. And so these chaps moved up. And when you end adjacent to a unit, you have to engage it. And so that's what we're doing here. When I initially set up, if you probably, if you were looking at any of the pictures earlier on, I had these guys flipped over. This is their movement side. And uh, for all that's just one factor, it's one factor. And so th this is their non-moving side. And so I can choose uh, when I set up whether I want them to be in move mode or not. And obviously, since they're going to be the recipients of the first attack, I elected to... Uh, flip these over and put them in non-move mode so they're in their most defensive stance possible, meaning that their defense, this is in it both, these are both attack factors, attack factor A and attack factor B. We're going to be using our attack factor B as our rating for our defense. <coughs> and these guys are going to use the A's. So what happens when we get, uh, we get to this combat phase? Well, there are a few things that aren't specifically clear in terms of sequencing that I could find, but I can use artillery either you know, directly against this unit, or if I was in range, I could use it as a counter battery fire if someone was trying to fire at me. But let's just, let's just assume for the moment that the person has initiative gets to fire their artillery first. And that's these guys here, this SAU 122 millimeter uh, self-propelled uh, artillery gun. He gets to fire, he has a, a combat factor of three. That combat factor of three, so we're going to flip him over, he's, he's fired now. He's going to fire at these dudes in the, in the woods. And we don't use any terrain benefits at all. And so, uh, no, no defensive benefits. Sorry, I had to pause the video there for a sec. Uh, but he has a defensive eight. So it's going to be three versus eight is minus five. So I'm going to go to the table, which I'll just show you here. See the minus three or less? And I actually rolled for this already, and I rolled a 6, which was no effect. And so we flip that over, and he survives the artillery rounds on this, uh, what we'll call, hasty attack, right? So now the choppers and the uh, 151st from the uh, 51st, sorry, the, the 1st Battalion of the 51st Regiment uh, is now going to attack these these chaps so it's 10 factors attacking eight factors but we're in the woods so we have 11 factors because we get three for being in non-move mode versus two if we're in this mode 
So what we're going to do is uh, attack those guys. But before we do that, actually, uh, what I just in terms of sequencing, it would make sense to me uh, that I would use the uh, artillery. The, this this barrage would happen, and I, because I have a range of eight here, I could have actually counter barraged this to stop them from firing. <coughs> Or, or mitigate their firing, but because they had a one, only a one in six chance uh, of really doing, well, actually it was a two, two in six chance, but a two in six chance of doing any damage to these guys, I elected not to do that. And rather, I'm going to fire this at the tanks. And so these guys are going to fire, and it's going to be three versus uh, five, actually. I'll be firing at five, so that'll be a minus two. And for that guy, let's roll the die. I rolled a five minus two is nothing, a one. So these guys flip over as fired. And now we resolve the combat. 10 factors versus 11 factors, it's a minus one. And I need to roll a die here. Another four, and that is gonna be on the minus one table, it's gonna be a B1. You can see that there. That do -de -do -de -do. See that B there just in the shadow? <coughs> so both parties receive a disruption each. Now, I assume that's going to affect both the attackers. I don't know that specifically, not because I can't find it in the rules, just that I don't remember. And that is, my, my friends, is how you conduct land combat. Uh, so it's combined arms effort there with helicopters and... Uh, tanks attacking these unsuppressed or, or disrupted units. Now, one of the things that obviously will be interesting to see, I guess, if I can do this correctly, I'm not sure that I can actually get it, but let's just move the camera. Um, the type of combat is going to be a function of whether it's air support, a maneuver-based combat, air defense, etc., or air to air. And then when you get down into it, when, when I'm in the maneuver phase, it's either ground, ground slash helicopters attacking ground units or ground helicopter to helicopter units. So and then it, it tells you which defensive factors and attack factors to use for each type of combat and the same for all the rest of these. So that's that. I haven't done any air combat yet because it's not the air phase, but we will certainly be uh, getting to that as soon as I now move to uh, the NATO or US um, forces uh, turn to move now and they will uh, have an opportunity to maneuver and then we'll see what they they want to do. All right, more when I see you soon. Keep rolling those dice.